It was 1916. A few years into the war, I was in the army. Infantry unit. All Welsh division over in France. Gwyn's Shorts, the audio adventures of the Legends of Tomorrow. The Ghost Train I am no longer convinced that this was such a good idea after all. Do you even know when and where we will land, Gwyn? When the scientist failed to reply, Ali knew that he was clueless. Gwyn had rebuilt his time machine with their help, and he had been quite excited about time travelling again. Ali had decided that it wasn't safe for him to travel alone, therefore Mick, Gideon and herself were tagging along. I don't get why we have to travel in this gazebo when we could have the Wave Rider back. I understand that you miss the comfort of your Wave Rider, Mr. Rory, but I can assure you that my time machine can be equally trusted, despite her being slightly more Spartan. So you keep saying. The time machine landed smoothly, much to Gwyn's satisfaction. Let's see where we are. They left the time machine and found themselves in a clearing. The descending sun suggested that it was early evening. Mick pointed towards a path and the group followed him without arguing. They walked in silence until they reached a concrete road. They could make a town in the distance. Also, there seemed to be some sort of camp outside the town. When Ali realized that it wasn't a camp, but an old-fashioned funfair from the 1920s, she smiled at Gwyn. It would seem we'll get to discover your time period. How does it feel to be back home, so to speak? It feels nice, actually. However, it would feel even nicer if this was Wales. Just as they were walking toward the entrance of the funfair, the sun went down, the colourful lights on the entrance arch went on, and the music started. It was as if the funfair had come to life just as they arrived. I have never been in a funfair before. I'm certain that you will enjoy the experience. The scientist gallantly offered his arm to Gideon, and they entered the funfair without even checking if Ali and Mick were following. Sure, Doc, let's get some fun, why not? It's so nice of you to ask for our opinion. They couldn't help but admire their surroundings. The funfair was rather small, but Ali and Mick could feel the familiar atmosphere with the stores selling candies and chocolates, those offering to win teddy bears and various useless prizes. There was even a merry-go-round. Gwen and Gideon were heading in that direction, both obviously enjoying the funfair. Wait, I want to try that first. That was a shooting ranch. How many ducks will you shoot today, sir? Fancy a nice gift for the lovely lady. Mick, have you noticed how much she looks and sounds like Kati? Do you think she's one of her ancestors? Don't know, don't care. <laughs> Dang, I missed. <laughs> hey, I'm out of practice, be kind with me. <laughs> ah, see, it's coming back to me. And also, have you noticed that she can't seem to take her eyes off Gwyn? It's quite unnerving. Still don't care. Maybe she's at the huts for him. Mr. Rory, may I try afterwards? Shooting wooden ducks looks amusing. Mick fired his rifle again, but his next shot hit something metallic and ricocheted. Duck! Ali didn't think twice and obeyed. She saw Gideon do the same. Mick had flattened Gwyn on the ground. The store holder had vanished. Oh! The next seconds felt like hours for Ali and Gideon, who didn't dare moving. It's all right, we can get up now. Are you sure? Yes, the bullet lodged itself in the stall structure. We're safe now. You almost got us all killed. Weapons are evil for a reason. Why would you use one of those for entertainment? Especially when all you get out of it are silly prizes. <sighs> Why don't we get some candies for Gideon? She hasn't tasted the traditional funfair sweets yet. I like this idea very much. What about checking the town before it's too late in the evening instead? I promised Gideon that we would try the merry-go-round. I'm amazed to know that they are still very popular in your time period. Fine, have it your way. Ali walked at his side and managed to get him to slow down a bit in order to talk to him without being heard. Something is bothering you. I can tell. 
It was no accident on the shooting range. You are right. Something smells fishy. I'm telling you, the stall holder? She tampered with the rifle somehow, and I've started to think that it might have something to do with the dock. I agree. That stall holder kept staring at Gwyn in a creepy way. I wish we could leave now. They had reached the merry-go-round, and the store holder welcomed them warmly. What a lovely family. I take it you want to have a good time here. You won't be disappointed. What is going on here? That first stall holder looked and sounded like Kati, and now this one is Iris's twin? Yeah, that's odd. And why are we the only ones noticing this? Are Gideon and the Doc blind or what? They're probably enjoying their time here too much to notice. This merry-go-round is so beautiful, I can't choose. Look at all those beautiful wooden figures. Do I want to ride the white horse, maybe the lion, or the elephant? Tell you what, you ride on the white horse, and I'll ride on that elephant next to you. Why don't you travel to the ringmaster's carriage, sir? What a brilliant idea! I'll join you, duck. Isn't it refreshing to enjoy the simple ways of life? Yeah, sure, if you like merry-go-rounds, which I don't. Really? What a shame. Of all inventions, this particular one is obviously a wonder of technology for its time. Whatever you're saying, Doc. The carousel suddenly stopped, and an alarming cracking sound came from above them. Sorry, Doc. Ha! Ah! Meg had grabbed Green's arm, and he threw him off the carousel, jumping right after him. Both men landed on the dusty ground. Gideon and Ali rushed toward them. The stir holder was nowhere to be seen. Mick, Gwyn, are you all right? Yes, are you all right? Do you need medical assistance? Gwen looked a bit confused, and Gideon held him up. What happened? Enough of this. There's something going on here, and I don't want to know what it is. First, the shot ricocheted at the shooting range, and now we almost got crushed by the roof coming down on us. It's getting dangerous by the minute, so let's get the hell out of this place. Aren't you overreacting a little, my boy? Those kinds of incidents are to be expected. Safety measures weren't as strict in my time period. In fact, incidents like the ones we encountered today were an inspiration for those who came up with all those safety measures. All right, all right. Here's what I suggest. We try one more attraction, and then we go to town and find a place to stay for the night. This sounds reasonable. Excellent suggestion, Miss Black. Whatever. Gwyn, what would you like to do? I would like us to take a ride on the ghost train. Oh, crap. I don't like this. Neither do I, but what can we do? I've got a few ideas, but I don't think you would like them. Mick and Ali were walking behind Gwyn and Gideon, who seemed to have already forgotten the incident and the merry-go-round. Have you seen how everyone is staring at Gwen? I could swear there is hatred in their eyes. Meg was about to reply when Gwen made a sudden turn to the left. Ali and Meg quickly joined him and Gideon, and the four of them remained standing on the spot, admiring the building that was a few feet away. It's impressive. It's creepy. <laughs> it is meant to be. This is the ghost train. Mick and Ali exchanged a worried look. Just as they were about to pass a purple tent, a woman rushed in front of them, effectively blocking their way. Before they realized it, she was holding one of their hands, palm upwards. Let the fortune teller reveal your destiny to you. Get lost. Gwyn! Gideon! Wait for us! Alas, they didn't hear her and went on towards the haunted mansion harboring the ghost train. Oh, no, 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 no. She tried to break free from the fortune teller, but the woman managed to drag her inside the tent. Mick followed, unwilling to leave Ali on her own. Now, tell me what you wish to know. Is it about love, children, work, travels and opportunities? Ali remained frozen, as if she was in some sort of trance. Ali, what's going on? Ali, snap out of it. I just had a vision. They... they all want to exert some kind of revenge on Gwyn. I don't need a vision to guess that. We need to get him out of this funfair before it's too late. 
It is already too late. Our ringmaster will not abandon us again. Ali and Mick ran outside the tent and rushed towards the ghost train, only to realize that Gwen and Gideon hadn't waited for them. They had already entered the haunted mansion. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome in my humble home. Now, take a seat, get comfortable, and be ready to scream out of terror in the ghost train. We should have waited for Miss Black and Mr. Rory. It would be much more fun doing this all together. Most definitely. However, they didn't seem too keen on enjoying the ride. They will probably be happy they missed it. Gwen and Gideon climbed in one of the minecarts used for the attraction, and the train soon started moving in a bumpy way, forcing Gideon to hold on to Gwen to keep her balance. How can you like that kind of thing? We can't see a thing in here, and I'm really afraid the train will derail. It doesn't look safe at all. It's a ghost train. It is meant to be a little scary. Of course, it's all about effects, and the monsters we'll see aren't real. See? Those flashes of light illuminating a grotesque face or some desperate skeleton? They're making you jumpy? I'm actually looking forward to the part where the stall holders will pretend to be supernatural creatures to try and frighten us. But surely the train should slow down, not go faster. This is indeed a little concerning. We're missing out most of the scary bits. As far as I'm concerned, I'm scared all right. And just at that very moment, the train shook violently as it took a curve and derailed, sending his occupants crashing on the ground. We're too late. They boarded the train already. Is there a way to stop this damn thing? Maybe the stall holder controls the train from the ticket office. We'll force them to stop the train. And of course there's no one home. Uh, I hate this place. Mick, you have to see this. What are you holding? The financial ledger? The number of people they made disappear over the years? No, it's something much better. It's the history of the funfair. Someone wrote a diary over the years recording the events leading to the funfair's decay. It's such a sad story. Help! We need help! There was an accident! No time for the history lesson. Let's go. Mick and Ali rushed inside the attraction and found the controls they had been looking for. Ali, turn on the lights. Already on it. Hold on tight, Gideon. We're coming. Ali and Mick easily found Gideon. She was sitting on the ground, her face smeared with dirt. She didn't need to tell them what had happened. The scene spoke for itself. Gwen was nowhere to be seen. While Ali made sure that Gideon was right, Mick looked around in search for any clues as to Gwen's whereabouts. Here, there's a hidden door in the wall. I bet it was meant for the stall holders to enter unnoticed and scare the travelers during their journey. Where is Dr. Davies? He is safe. How can you be so sure? Because the stall holders wouldn't hurt their leader. They've spent over a decade looking for him. All they want is their funfair to be popular again. What are you talking about? I don't understand. Look at this picture. Do you recognize him? <gasps> That's Dr. Davies! No, to them, he's the ringmaster. The man who brought good luck and fortune to a little countryside funfair. But I don't have any records of Dr. Davies ever being a ringmaster. Where am I? Gwen struggled to sit and was helped by the fortune teller. He was in one of the storeholders' caravans by the look of it. What happened? Is Miss Gideon all right? Easy, ringmaster. You hit your head pretty hard. You should rest. Your friend is quite all right. She was knocked out in the crash. Your companions are tending to her. I know you. Of course you do. I knew that you would come back eventually, Ringmaster. It was in the cards. Burliers failed to tell us that it would take so many years. What? What are you talking about? And why do you keep calling me Ringmaster? I'm Dr. Gwyn Davies. I'm a scientist, not a ringmaster. You have quite some nerves, abandoning us and then showing up with your new friends years later as if nothing had happened. Maybe he got into an accident and lost his memories. But then why did he leave without any notice ten years ago? I didn't leave. I have never been here before. Coward. You could at least be brave enough to admit that you abandoned us to our fate and you came back to see what's to save. 
Now that you have seen in which state the funfair is, you just play dumb to avoid the consequences. It doesn't work like this. You have a responsibility towards us. Absolutely not. Then how do you explain that you're on that picture? She was pointing towards a frame hanging on the wall. It was a group portrait. Gwen recognized Pearl, Flora, Fiona and Florbella, the four star holders he was currently talking to. The ringmaster. He looks exactly like me. How is that possible? Can't you see that he doesn't remember? He didn't make that reaction. I can feel that it's not an act. How can it be? Why can't I remember? Everyone seemed to share the same confusion now. Why don't we tell you the story of the fanfare from the beginning? Maybe we'll trigger some memories. Twelve years ago, we were struggling to survive. We had left our respective funfairs to start our own. We wanted it to be a happy place for us to live in and a joyful place for everyone who would look for entertainment. Competition was hard and our old bosses didn't make it easy for us, trying to undermine all our efforts. They wanted us back, of course, but we wouldn't hear about it. We wanted to remain free. We didn't have a leader back then. Then one day, you came. We recognized you for one of our own at first sight. You looked around and mocked us. You called us amateurs. I would never forget this day. Such arrogance, such self-confidence, and yet you were so charismatic. At first, we were quite upset. We were trying our best, and you, a stranger, judged us harshly. But then we realized that we needed someone like you to run the fanfare. We offered you to become our ringmaster, and you agreed. No one ever disputed your leadership. In fact, your skills made you the obvious choice. We never questioned your decisions. You were strict but fair. Under your guidance, the fun fair started making a name for itself. We became famous enough to consider settling in one place and have people travel to visit us instead of us traveling to get to them. Everything was going great. Soon the fun fair got famous and we were praised. But one night... You simply vanished. We feared that something terrible had happened to you. When in fact, it looked like you abandoned us. There was no sign of trouble in your caravan, but the fact that you seemed to have left leaving everything behind you was worrying. We searched for you, but never found any clue about what happened to you. After a couple of days, we got the police involved. They didn't take you seriously, and suggested that we got rid of our leader. Soon, the funfair started having difficulties. Without you, everything seemed so complicated. We weren't happy anymore, and it showed. We got fewer visitors, the funfair started to decay, we kept running because that's what we do and because it's our only home, but... But we became the shadows of what we once were. That's why when we saw you, we were both happy and angry, as you can easily understand. We hoped that you finally came back to us, but you were just pretending to be someone else, walking around with your friends as if nothing had ever happened, as if we were strangers. It didn't cross our minds that you might suffer from amnesia. After all those years, we just got used to the idea that you grew tired of us and decided to leave one night. Will you help us restore the fanfare to its former glory? Ali, Gideon and Mick were ushered in the caravan. Dr. Davies, are you alright? I'm fine. I had a very interesting chat with Miss Fiona, Miss Flora, Miss Florbella and Miss Pearl. In fact, I have something to ask you. Would you mind if we remained here for a little while? You must have seriously banged your head on the floor in that ghost train. Why do you want to stay, Gwen? They asked for my help to restore the funfair's former glory. Of course they did, and you couldn't say no, obviously. And what are we supposed to do while you help them? You could be part of the funfair. I could teach you how to operate the carousel. This sounds so exciting! Oh no, not you too. I'm tempted to say yes as well. This could be a one-of-a-kind experience. Fine, I guess there's no point in arguing anyway. I told you they would accept. I read it in the cards. Speaking of which, I would very much be interested in learning your art. 
But there is one condition. I will help you restore the Funfair's reputation, but I will train my successor in the process. When I believe him to be ready, he is to take my place as a ringmaster and I will be free to go. You have our word that you will be free to go once the Funfair's reputation is restored. Pearl and Flobella were the first ones to leave the caravan. Gideon followed Fiona, the merry-go-round owner, and Mick walked away with Flora, who was taking care of the shooting stand. There's something bothering you, isn't it? What? Me? Of course not. There isn't. Gwyn, it's written all over your face. What are you worried about? I believe those people when they say I was there being their ringmaster a long time ago. The fact that I don't remember any of it has only one explanation. My future self will meet them in their past. They would remember present me as my coming here happened in their past, but since it hasn't happened to me yet... You have no recollection of that period? I understand. But there is something else. I can sense it. They remember me. And only me. Alan, Mick, Tia, Kati, and myself weren't with you when you arrived at the fun fair. But this doesn't necessarily mean that we went different ways. Maybe we remained in the mansion or traveled somewhere else in the meantime. And I would stay here and help these people for so long? No, my dear Miss Allie, I don't think so. Gwyn, it, it hasn't happened yet. So why do you worry about the future? Isn't it enough that you worried about what you thought was your past? Try to enjoy the present for once. Let's consider it a holiday. Speaking of which, the first order of business would be to take a ride on the ghost train.